Shit. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. Oh, hang on. Hi, everyone. Here we go. Bring the chat. There's the chat. Right. Sorry, not exactly sure what happened there. Uh, the PC locked up when I minimised it whilst loading. I need to minimise it again, but I'm just going to wait for it to stop loading and try and learn my lesson. I hope you're all okay. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Edwin Minecraft. And Nervous Hawk. Hi there, Nervous Hawk. Who is T? Wait, who is T? And M Duck. Thank you very much, folks. Hmm. Right. <clears throat> Loading up Kerbal. Hang on, I'll just pop something on in the background. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh no, what have I done? Hang on. Nope, that's the wrong window. Sorry. Let me just move chat over here on the right so I can read you clearly. Hello, everyone. Hmm. And then replace that with music. Let's go with this one. Right. Okay. Ooh, excuse me, sorry. Here we go, loading the save file now. So yeah, thank you for saying so, Adam, and welcome indeed, Adam. Mm. So for the people just joining then, um, I was trying to burn off some excess fuel at a space station. Well, a, a, a uh, Duna station rather, hang on. So a station on the surface of Mars. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I was trying to reduce, reduce its weight so that we could launch the thing, potentially, several kilometers to the northwest in order to go to a better location. Uh, somewhere that's a bit higher up, and somewhere that's a bit brighter, and with more resources that we can mine. Whether or not I can do that trip safely, I don't know. We'll find out momentarily. So how are we doing? Okay, they're all empty. Hmm. Cool, so we just need to refine the oxidizer. Work in progress, so back to the tracking station. Hmm. Uh, I do nerdy dork, but only for certain games who struggle otherwise, notably armor or space engineers. So the problem with the streaming PC is that it uh, requires a bit more complexity when it comes to getting all of the audio layers split out properly. Uh, that's not a problem for most streamers, but I'm only moonlighting as a streamer. My real uh, task is to get footage that I can edit and having combined audio layers all squashed together by whatever streaming uh, PC software you're using oh thank you Joink, hi there Joinks viewers, welcome indeed yeah basically I have to set up a virtual audio deck and it's a bit of a hassle mm. alright indeed Joink, thank you very much I hope you're having a lovely evening okay Where's the dog? Uh, she's just, uh, she's got, yeah, she's got the curtain open next to me, sort of, so. If I show her, then I'll show her where I live. Good luck, Chimere. Good luck indeed. Hope it went very well. Okay, so, warp to the sunrise. Where are the ants? They're hanging out in their uh, ant farm, hopefully. I put down a small piece of raspberry in their outworld, and I put the camera on it. Hang on. Is the camera still working? There it is. <laughs> Deflated raspberry on a piece of cardboard under a microscope. Yummy. No ants right now. They were looking, they, yeah, they were having a look earlier. That's gross, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's just a piece of raspberry under a microscope. Hmm. Right. Cool. So, uh, how are we doing? Let's have a look. So, full tank of <coughs> liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay. What about the ore container? Let's jettison the ore. Okay. So, delta V. 713 delta V. What do you think, chat? Hmm. Monopropellant tanks. We've got loads of weird solar panels dotted all over the shop, haven't we? We've got to retract most of these, if not all of them. If we're going to be travelling through the atmosphere, they're going to snap off. Okay. Let's see how far we can get. 
So retract solar panels. I'm going to do a proper save. Yeah, retract. Is, are we all good here? Do we need to deploy anything? Hmm, not really. Where's the flag? Did we have a flag here or not? Surely we placed a flag down. Zoom in. Sort by flags. Oh, there's a flag on the edge. First Duna landing. Oh, of course, because we landed over there and then we we hopped into the crater further, didn't we? Because we landed in the wrong place. All right. So, uh, Bob. Oh, I'll have Malman do it. Malman, would you mind? Okay, looks like you're going to be our pilot for the operation. To mark that we were here. Bob, no need to be... No, Malman, no need, be, no need to be dramatic, Malman. Just turn around. What fucking... What are you doing? You, you camera shy? What the hell is... Okay, hang on. Plant the flag. Hmm. Nice. Okay. So, uh, what is this? This is, uh, <clears throat> Duna Base Site. Original place of the Duna Base. Malman, Bob, Jeb, Daffler. Who else is here? Daffler. Hang on. Uh, Malman, of it. Well, yeah. Who else has been here? Who's the other who's the other engineer upstairs? Jeb the pilot. Malman the pilot. Bob Jeb. Jeff? No. Jeff's the probe. He's on Ike. Uh, fuck. <laughs> and friends. <laughs> Whoever it is, she's gonna kill me if she ever finds out. Hang on. There we go. Uh, yes, I had to restart it, Hal. Uh, it went wrong. Hang on. Board. Stadius, that's it. Stadius. That's her name. Sorry, Stadius. Okay. Right, back to the Space Center briefly, do a proper save, come back, launch it, and then realize that I've launched it in the wrong direction, load it, launch it in the right direction, and then see how far we can get on the Delta V, on the Delta V that we have. Okay, so, save the game. Oh fuck, is the name of the save file. Indeed, Holy Imperator. I'm trying to launch the Duna base on the surface of Mars. Where are we going? The surface of Mars. All right. Um, thank you, Lord J. Herrig. Thank you very much, Herrig. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hi there, Mashinka. Yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. Right. Here we go. So welcome, folks, for those joining. So let's have a look. Liquid fuel, 720. Let's distribute it further down, shall we? So pl open up these tanks, allow access to them, and then filter this out. Ah. Out. Will it work? Hang on. Unrestrict, unrestrict, unrestrict. Oh, is it because I'm accelerating time? Hmm? What have I done? I cannot unrestrict the tank? What have I done? Is the base out of power? No. Is it because someone needs to be in control of it? No pilot in the module down, therefore no control? No crew control. Oh. I see. Malman, could you get out... Stop playing computer games over there and go in here. Uh, what would... Hang on. Transfer. Transfer crew. There we go. Oh, it's another... Stadius Malman transfer over there. 
Cool. Thank you very much. There we go. And then select them all. And then select that. And transfer the liquid fuel out. Try to equalize the weight a little bit. Move it further down. All right. There we go. Retract the antenna. Start retracting the solar panels. I should really get them all on one group, shouldn't I? Horribly awkward solar configuration that we've got and made here. Right, good luck, everyone. Retract the drill. Drill is moving. Stop the science research to save power. There we go. <clears throat> Have I forgotten anything? The ladder. Track the ladder. Okay, stop that. So, we have seven, yeah, almost 800 Delta V to do this. Oh, one more. Here we go, then. Oh, and another one. Oh, the parachutes. Good shout. Let's do that super quick. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, so, Bob. Who's Bob? No, uh, not Malman. Um, Stadius, could you just EVA? Climb up the ladder and repack those chutes. And then make sure they're in the proper staging. Repack that chute. Well done. Chutes have been properly packed. Can you go up in there or... Nope, it's full. Go down into the science module. Okay, there we go. What can you see in there, Stadius? E next to Bob. Alright. So how are you doing up there, Melman? Okay, yeah, that's the engine. Look at this. The engine's mounted up here. So you've got to control this. Jesus. <laughs> right. Shit. Okay, am I gonna do am I gonna be able to do this? Hang on. Is it daylight? Sufficient daylight for this operation? Waiting for a little bit more daylight. There we go. Right, so our target is actually all the way over there. Yeah, wait a little bit longer so that both are in super daylight. Target the dragonfly base, which is that way, right? Dragonfly base. That way. That way, right? What's that? Duna first landing. Duna first landing. So it's in fact that way. Which is what? If I wiggle, it's that way. Okay, here we go. Staging on the shoots. Yes, good shout. I did forget about the staging on the shoots. That would have been a holy shit moment. So here we go. We launch. See how far we can get. Shoot down. Okay, quick save. <laughs> SAS enabled. Engine thrust good. Target, anti-target, so it's that way, right? God, I'm not even sure which direction it is. Now that I look at it. That way. Okay, here we go. Fuck. Seriously, is it that way? I guess it must be. Alright. Look at the nav ball, not the screen. Here we go. So initiating burn. Now, good luck. Where's the target? Where's the target? There she is. That way. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Up, up, up. Give me... Up higher, we need to go higher. Right. Fuck. Higher, 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 higher. Higher than 3k, otherwise we won't clear the crater. Oof. 4k should be fine. Cancel that. Gosh, she's hard to steer. Oh god! The radiator was ripped off. Really? Really? 
Shit, do the radiators not survive this operation? We are in a dense atmosphere. Oh god, something else just fell off. <laughs> We're losing pieces of the station, everyone. Cancel that. God, our Delta V is very low. I'm going in the right direction, though. Okay. We're about to run out of Delta V. For real? How far did we get? That's it. That's all my fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That's pitiful. That's actually pitiful. We didn't even... We barely cleared the bloody crater. Okay. So... What if I treat it a little bit more like a rocket and try and clear the atmosphere a bit before we do a sideways burn? Hmm? Okay. Quick load that. So, instead of doing a sideways burn on four kilometers, I'm just going to go up and then do a sideways burn with whatever delta V I've got where the atmosphere is a bit thinner. All right. And yeah, I'll, I'll retract the landing gear sooner. So here we go. So it's that way. Right. One second. Got to wait for the music drop, obviously. That's the most important thing. Doo, doo, doo. It's grooving the engines. Wait for it. Now. Up, 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 up we go. Cancel. Okay, let us go. Hold it steady. So we're flying up where the atmosphere is lighter, and then we're going to push it out. The antenna got ripped off. Fuck. Okay. Atmosphere is getting thinner. It's just that way, isn't it? We better do a pretty early burn. Get ready. There it is, that way. Here I go. Initiating burn now. Fuck. Come on. That's it, we're out. How far did we make it? Ah! Oh. <laughs> well, shit. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can rapidly just refuel. Let's see if there's enough fuel in the surface here in order to successfully refuel the thing. And then do another quick hop. Let's see if we can do it. So yeah, something did fall off, didn't it? Was it the antenna? Not that antenna. It must have been a different one. So get ready to initiate the, uh, the parachutes. That's our one saving grace, I suppose. Turn it around. Can the SAS do it solo? Yeah, remember to do this sooner rather than later before the atmosphere gets thinner. 
Initiate the gears. There we go. Uh, I believe that's Sync 24, Dance of the Droids. Okay. Three K from the landing. I can activate the parachutes whenever I wish. Initiating them now. Parachutes deployed. Please unfurl. Oh god, please unfurl faster. Oh no, we're traveling very quickly. We are traveling very, very quickly. <gasps> well, bollocks. I've learnt my lesson about relying only on parachutes, haven't I? <laughs> Malman, are you the only survivor? Oh god. Malman is the only survivor. Shit. Hmm. I don't think it's really viable. Do you think? What if... <laughs> no, this is stupid. No, that's a dumb idea. That's the stupidest idea. <laughs> um, so... Can this... Does this have a drone unit on it? Did I take off its drone unit? Can this detach and we just fly this only? Does it have a drone unit? How does this get here if it didn't have a drone unit? There is a drone unit over there that we can steal. Put it on the top. Turn this into a craft. Have the others hold on to the ladders on the side for the entire journey. Why though? Why do that? Why get the people there if we don't have the refinery and all this stuff? Hmm. Nah. If anything, we, it's the refinery and the stuff that we really care about, isn't it? Okay. Well, technically, I can pull the same maneuver again. Let's pull the same th thing. But this time... Save a little bit of Delta V to slow down enough for the landing. Hmm? Yeah. So let's give it another welly. Well, sorry, what's the antenna that ripped off that you went rip antenna? Oh, that thing. Is it that thing? I track that. All right, let's give let's give it another welly and see what happens, shall we? So, and use the parachutes way earlier. Yeah, yeah. So, we're ready. We're ready. Initiating now. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Take us up, take us up. Won't be able to travel as far. Stability spin, there we go. Cut there. There we go. All right. Save about fifty Delta V for the final burn. Get ready. We're not going to get very far at all, are we? Go where the atmosphere is absolutely thinnest. Okay. Here we go. Burn, 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 burn. Save a little bit of Delta V. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Ooh, 
not going to get far at all, are we? Get ready to save. Let's cut. There we go. That's all we got. Best we can do. Okay. Alright. Why do I insist on saving this craft? Ah, eh, convenience, mostly. Maybe it's not worth it. Hmm. Okay. Indeed. So we'll stop, try and refuel, see if we can. Right, bring the craft around before the atmosphere gets too thin. That's true. I am bringing a, bringing a replacement miner, aren't I? So even if we can't save this bit, it's no big deal. Still, it's nice to have all the extra equipment in case we forget something. Radiators and stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Triggering shoots. Ah. Uh. There we go. Two point six kilometers. Don't forget the gears. <clears throat> he says, forgetting the gears. Okay. Yes, you can repack parachutes so long as you have an engineer. What are the heights of the chute set to? Are they too low, do you reckon? Maybe. Fuck. Did I burn too early? Can the chutes handle it? Please take the stress landing legs. Ooh, bugger me, bugger me, bugger me. Oof! Oh, fuck! No! <laughs> Uh, was it just a solar panel that got borked? Can we fix it? Yeah. Uh. Oh, piss ass. We might need the engines to fix it. But guess what we need? Liquid fuel. <laughs> the drill is impotent up there. No, I don't think this is happening, is it? Okay. Damn. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to load it, and then... Hmm. So there's one more thing we can do this evening before I piss off. And that is... Not these guys here, but Jeff. Jeff is still waiting in orbit to go down. Let's land Jeff. At the new site, eh? So you guys wait here. Do your thing. Right. Let's go over to Jeff. Okay. Am I just saving them? Well, I was trying to move all the equipment as well, Papillon, to the new site, which isn't that far away. Instead, I'll bring down some more equipment in orbit that's waiting there for the new site. And that equipment takes the form of Jeff, who's here. Jeff Enhanced. Not just a normal Jeff, an Enhanced Jeff. Okay, so we'll send Jeff. How much Delta V does Jeff have? Oh, piss flaps. Do you know what I've just realised? Jeff doesn't have parachutes, does he? Because it's an... It's an... Jeff doesn't have parachutes. <laughs> because Jeff is an Ike probe. He's going to go in all engines. Okay. That's interesting. Can he do it on 3,000 Delta V? He's going to have to. He's going to have to. Okay. Right. How powerful is the out of VAB editor? Depends on the gravity of the, gravity of the situation. <laughs> so some parts can be moved in low gravity situations. Okay, so let's just, uh, yeah, so bring it down as quickly as we can then. So, um, do we need to fix the inclination? Yeah, it'd be kind of handy, wouldn't it? So, we'll go here, add manoeuvre, fix the inclination to roughly that. 
Wait, what the hell am I doing? Set a target that's already on equatorial. There we go. Go from the ascending node. There's a four degree inclination difference. Match that. Approximately match that. Okay. Uh, turn to face manoeuvre. Warp to next manoeuvre. Whoops. That's going to get me drunk. Uh, drunk. That's going to get me dizzy, even. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Teeny weeny burn. Reduce the thrust limiter down. Two second burn. There we go. So we're at a weird angle, so I'm just fixing it, basically, for those not familiar. There we go. Cool. Okay, and then we just come on down. So we're at the right. Yep. So warp to next maneuver here. Point retrograde. Here we go. 28 days. Hmm. Hopefully Jeff, Jeff doesn't die. Fingers crossed. Should be alright. I added some cub engines to the side of his poodle engine to assist him. For the poodle engine will be quite pants inside an atmosphere. Even one as wispy as Dunas. Okay. Plus I wanted to make sure that he had sufficient delta V in the event of any holy fucking shit moments that would require thrust to weight. Do Kerbals have limited oxygen or food? No, they're fine. They've got loads. Uh, it's simply because all of the uh, vehicles that are dispatched are filled to the brim with snacks, entertainment, more magazines than they could, than they could ever read. In fact, they don't even want to come home. They're having so much fun. Indeed. See, why, while Kerbal technology when it comes to the rocketry is fairly basic, Snack replication is actually super advanced. Here we go. Deep lore. All right. Here we go. Oh wait, how far until the? Oh, never fine. Oh, dearie me, that was way too aggressive. We're coming in on a collision course. Oops. My bad. Oh, it's a Rhino engine. Good God, that's like a very, very powerful engine. Whoops. We're coming into crash, everybody. Let me just fix that. Increase speed. Uh, what? What is going on? Retrograde? No, prograde. Did I just spin all the way around and just go retrograde for no reason? We are quite literally falling into the heart of Duna. Thank you, Doron. Welcome indeed, Doron. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh, I see. You're responding to yeah, your previous comment, Doron. Well, you know. In my defense a little, Doron, people ask me questions and I answer them. For example, who's that? That said, oh, someone just said, what did I think about the end of Game of Thrones? Ah, oh, thank you for asking that question. Well, I'll tell you what I think about Game of Thrones. Oh, I loved it. Loved it. I thought it was all perfectly satisfying. Really enjoyable, in fact. Yeah. Everything was perfectly set up. It was really emotional as well. My favourite part is when Sansa got to be Queen of Winterfell. The girl power. Yeah. Isn't that your favourite part? It's my favourite part. Or the bit where I oh, is a badass. Oh, yes. <laughs> Isn't that your favourite part? Oh, or that bit where she met um, uh, Shit, no, I'm young. I know this reference. He, she met, um... I genuinely don't know it. Shit. Um, floppy-haired bloke who sings in songs. 
he was in like, he, um, fuck, Ed Sheeran, that's the one, Ed Sheeran, no, the bit where she met Ed Sheeran, yes, you could, it's like, dude, uh, Kremhart, you could have literally said anything there, and I would have just gone with it, you could have said like, Gary Lineker, and I would have been like, yeah, Michael Barrymore, yeah, no, I'm not even kidding, I genuinely had no idea who that was, I th I'm old, uh, so I, I just thought, so everyone was going crazy after the episode, like, oh my god, that cameo, I was like, cameo, what cameo, there was a cameo? And then I genuinely thought it was the other bloke that they were talking about because there were two Lannister soldiers that the cameras focused on and there was that blonde haired one and then there was a brown haired one. I was like, wait, the brown haired one? Well, who's he? And I was like, no, it's the blonde one. Anyway. Weren't there some other... Sorry, my brain is going places. Weren't there some other cameos? Some other like... Oh, of course there was. There was, um... That Icelandic band. They were the... They were the ones playing the weird instrument during the... the um... Uh, the Purple Wedding, weren't they? <laughs> Starbucks cameo. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, are they... Are, are they Icelandic? Did I misremember? Um, per sorry, um, Joffrey's wedding. Joffrey and, um, sexy lady. Uh, Marjorie Tyrell. Uh, Monsters of Men were in there as well. Not familiar, sorry. Right. Indeed, yeah. Purple, yeah. The um, what is it? The uh, the strangler as well. The name of the crystals. Hang on. Right. So, initiating. Are we gonna be okay? Cool. Yeah, we're fine. Where's the funny? Alas, this is Kerbal. It's for huge nerds. Yeah. Thank you, Survivor Carrier. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's my opinion on Riley Reed? Well, I'm a huge fan, obviously. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, which one? No, not that one. Who am I thinking of? I was thinking of. Sorry, no, I got mixed up. Uh. What's the name? Fuck. Uh... Remy, that was it. Sorry, now in my brain, I thought I thought I thought, I thought Riley Reed was Remy uh, with the hula hoop. Different porn star. Oh shit! What am I doing? I should be burning. Hang on. Yes, that's the one, Cyborg. The lady with the hula hoop. And can't she roller skate as well? Or is that someone else? Wait, have I done a re-entry? I need to be careful. I need to make sure I can actually have a stable orbit. No, it's okay, isn't it? Should be fine. Come a bit lower. In fact, wait for the app. Do it properly. Warp here. Speed up just a little bit. All right. Why do I know porn star names? I'm single and I'm on the internet. And I'm a, and I'm a bloke. Uh, thank you, Macan. Macan Marcus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alright, one second. Same, but you can't name a single one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Of course, mate. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we believe you. Thank you, Boise. Thank you very much, Boise. Okay. So I'm just trying to get into a relatively stable... Oh, this is fine, isn't it? 
Okay, we can just plan the re entry. Well, that's a bit steep. Yeah, come a bit lower on the other side. So sorry, for those just joining the stream, I'm trying to drop down this uh, rover. A very large rover, actually. It's more like, more like the size of a large truck. Down onto Duna, which is Mars. Co uh, well, a complication is the fact that this, this type of... Pr this design is meant to go to Ike, that moon over there. In fact, there is one of almost identical design called Jeff on that moon. So the complication is, this thing is not built to land in an atmosphere. It has no parachutes of any kind. Oops. Not that the Duna atmosphere is particularly formidable. What am I doing? I am increasing my altitude because I'm dumb. Turn around. So, my best um, opportunity is, is basically a very aggressive descent. Coming in from a very high angle of attack. So that I'm not coasting through the atmosphere for a while, burning up. Because this probe won't be able to tolerate that. So I'm going to try and identify the landing site, which is equatorial. And I'm going to just try and basically drop pod it. Come down very hard from a very high angle and then burn like a motherfucker before we smash into... Uh, I was going to say terra firma. Duna firma? Mm. Right, where are we going? Let's quick save it. There we are. There's our landing site, location 67k. In fact, can I get myself, yeah, get rid of these. Delete these waypoints. Set as target, Dragonfly Base. Dragonfly Base has been selected. Stand by. Give me, st uh, give me retrograde burn only. There's Dragonfly Base. All right, quick save it before I cock it up horrendously. Add maneuver. How long until that maneuver? 17 minutes. We burn. I do mean aggressive. We're doing a very s steep. Let's come in there very, very. If we miss, it's not a big problem because I can just utilize the the wheels on the thing to uh, the drive to it. To it. And it, it does seem to be in a favorable dune sea type location. But uh, let's try and land as close as we can. In fact, try and land a little bit over it so that we can always slow down a bit more. Turn to face the maneuver. Uh, it's a 46 second burn in 17 minutes. Quick saved. Warping to next maneuver. Here we come. This is us right here, folks. Oops, I might need to shimmy it because we have, in fact, missed the target. Shimmy that maneuvering node further along. Let's go there, shall we? Okay. Warp to next maneuver, please. In fact, I might need to just, just, might as well just go now then. 25 seconds till we hit the burn. Stand by. Burn. Oh, go now then. Burn time 46. Let's go. Oh. Also, I forgot to turn up the thrust on the engine. Hmm. Here we go. Oops. And I need to retract that solar panel before we have an accident. Okay. Why don't I use mech chip? Not sure why, really. Um. I'm not necessarily mod hostile, but I always find that if I install too many mods, I have trouble picking up the game again a few months later, when mods have updated and I've forgotten how to use them. And I often find that I spend more time just trying to find the right mods than I do actually playing the game. So mods, yes, sometimes, but at the same time, sometimes I like to keep it simple. Maneuver confirmed. Point retrograde, hold it there. Here we go, coming on in. Of course, yes, to each their own, and I do yeah, play with many mods, but again, I just like to be able to pick up things again smoothly later. There is our target, everybody. So again, mentioning this for the people at the back who aren't really familiar with this in general, Mars in the real world, its surface is covered in a, like almost like a talcum powder like uh, material. It's not really sand like we like coarse like we would understand it. Unfortunately, it means it gets everywhere, caked on everything, solar panels especially. It's a bit of a ball ache. The surface of Mars is actually way windier than you might expect, despite only having 1% total atmospheric pressure compared to Earth. 
And that's because when it enters its winter, most of the atmosphere freezes to the poles in a layer of thick carbon dioxide frozen over the water ice that is there. So when it actually thaws, it blows across the surface, forming huge dust devils and generally making it a very unpleasant place to live if we did ever want to go there. So it's a very, very windy, very inhos inhospitable world. The northern hemisphere of Mars is actually very flat, surprisingly so, especially in contrast to its southern hemisphere, which is extremely hilly. And prominent features on Mars consist of enormous super, well not super volcanoes, but enormous regu regular volcanoes, which are the largest mountain systems in the solar system, notably Olympus Mon, which is so big it actually pokes out the atmosphere. And if you were to stand on the top of it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually be aware that you're on a mountain. The curvature of the planet comes before the damn slope. And also further down there, represented probably by this one, enormous cracks stress cracks from former uh, tectonic activity, plates that have long since stopped moving. Enormous canyons, kilometers deep, making anything we have on Earth look like <laughs> nothing. Stand by. We're traveling at 500 meters per second, 29 kilometers from the surface. Getting ready to jettison this engine. Yeah, burn a little bit. No, we should be fine. Give me full power though, just in case I need it. 25 kilometers from the surface. Let's initiate a bit of a burn because we are moving quite quickly. I need to jettison this engine. I hope it's not going to be a projectile. It's going to be a bit of a problem, actually. Please don't be a projectile. Uh-oh. Didn't think of this. Oh, stand by. Turn it down slightly. I need you to jettison, please. Will you jettison smoothly? You did. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if that hits the base, I'll piss myself. <laughs> the chances. 13 kilometers and falling. Stand by. No, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. 11 kilometers from the surface, moving at 557. Slow down a bit. Whoa, we got some kick on that. Ugh. We're okay. Plenty of oomph. Can't detach the poodle. That's a bit annoying. Can only detach the whole assembly. Stand by. Six kilometers. Initiate faster burn. Moving at 300 meters per second. We've got to burn hard. We've got loads of thruster weight. Beautiful. Okay. Push the retrograde marker over the target just to get us a bit further. Science data accomplished with seismic activity. The atmosphere is a bit tough. Hang on. We're fine. We're all good, everybody. One... 1,700 meters from touchdown. Stand by. No, no, no. Give me surface. Give me surface. Don't switch to target. Relative speed. Not that it matters. It's not moving. 900 meters and falling. Stand by. 70 meters per second. 600 meters and falling. 500 meters and falling. Burn, burn, burn. Well done, Jeff. You're doing great. 200 meters and falling. Look for the dust. Look for the dust. Gently now, gently now. It's a bit awkward, bit of a long vessel. 60 meters and falling. Slow and steady, slow and steady. There's the dust. Oh, fuck. Got a bit of a... Just, just come flopping down and... Just let it drop. Let it... Bit of a... Damn, did I just break the... No, no, we're okay. Shit, we're okay. Jettison! Jettison! It's free! We're down. Alright. Up traction, up traction. Give me more traction, please. Initiate brakes. Override friction control, please. Friction control up. Stand by. Okay. Brakes off. We'll start moving. Okay, traction control down. And we're moving. Welcome to Duna, Jeff. You're here. Probe deployed. The mining the mining rover is here. 
here we are. So, yes, uh, you've just observed one of the major difficulties, uh, not with parachutes, of course, but the major difficulties of landing on Duna. It's, uh, what's the quote? Uh, Mars's atmosphere is uh, not thick enough to be useful, but still enough to be a problem. So parachutes are pretty fucking ineffective trying to land anything on Duna. On Mars, sorry. Hence, you've got to come up with really complicated solutions. Oh, yes, the... Thank you. forgot about these. So things like sky cranes and rockets. Which is also why half of the missions sent to Mars... Oops, I'm going the wrong way. That way. Half of all missions sent to Mars have failed. It is a challenge to get to the red planet. It's even more of a challenge to land safely. What is that? Well, Jeff enhanced debris seven kilometers that way. Okay, can I get a bit more steering going on here? It's fine. So yeah, we're about 1.3 kilometers away from Dragonfly Base. Nice and steady. There she is over there. Indeed, life on Mars would be pretty... Uh, uh, sorry, human life on Mars would be pretty unpleasant, frankly. It would be a very difficult uh, first few years setting everything up. No doubt we will probably have to live underground in the lava tubes that we've already identified from orbit, giving us some measure of protection from solar radiation, because the lack of a magnetic field will leave us vulnerable to it. But yeah... Very windy, very unpleasant, very desolate place is Mars. But the good news is if we're able to solve the challenges to just get another set of humans somewhere else in the solar system, we will dramatically increase our overall survival chances because holy fucking shit, the solar system, the galaxy is a shooting gallery. All it's going to take is one big enough rock and everything we've done is, everything we've built is over. If we've got two planets or more though, the equation changes quite dramatically. Our survivability skyrockets. Four hundred meters, four hundred and thirty meters from Dragonfly. Oh yeah, I've got rave lights. Okay. Welcome to Dragonfly Base. All of this is currently automated. No Kerbals have arrived, yet. But now we have a mining assembly. This vessel is capable of mining. Although, do you know what I've just realized? I have not solved the radiator problem in Jeff Enhanced. We'll have to bring another radiator. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Standby. Deploying. Grappling arm. Welcome to Dragonfly Base. Please transfer all of the remaining fuel from Dragonfly. Evening out the weight. Okay. Thank you for watching everyone. This has been a bit of a very long stream, but uh, we successfully set up another station in a much more convenient location. Flatter, brighter, more, min more mineable resources that we can use to fill up other missions. And all I need to do is bring... What do I need to do? We've got the fuel storage capabilities right here. We have the mining capabilities. I suppose we just need the Kerbals. Bring the Kerbals and a couple of additional radiators and then we're solid, really. Nice. We have another place where we can perform science experiments exploring the nearby biomes, the craters, the ravines, 
for signs of life. Welcome to Duna, everybody. If you're watching and you've not played Kerbal Space Program, I very, very strongly recommend it. It's an excellent game. Right. Thank you again. Have a good evening. Let me just see what people are doing. One second. Thank you, Cute Kitten, uh, M4Av, The Mad Badger, Ninja Lantern, Boise, and Maka and Marcus. Thank you, all of you. One second. So, right now in the stream team, my clan mates, let's have a look. Digby is doing a bit of Not For Broadcast, Yuki is doing Super People, and Harry is doing Valorant. In which case, let me hand you over to ZF Digby then, who's chilling this evening with a bit of Not For Broadcast. He speaks highly of this game, in fact. Do give him some love. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Thank you again. Have a lovely evening. This is ZF Digby.